start. Um, so we have a, just before we get like properly started, um, if you want to see the, are you going to be talking about the uh, captions, Sarah? I can't remember. Uh, yes, I think you put some instructions in there about captions. Yes. Never mind. Then just carry on. If I don't mention it, you can horn in and mention okay. it as I get to my end part. Very good. Very All good. right. Uh, Steph, thank you for getting us launched. This, this, the IT part of these is always the most challenging part. Welcome everyone else to our December uh, 2021 meeting. We're online, obviously. Uh, we were super smart and decided to do that a few weeks ago and look at the storm and save everybody from having to go out any further this evening. So that's super. Um, thank you to everybody for keeping up their membership for in the 100 plus who care in Apples Valley, uh, which means you're also keeping up your commitment to our Valley nonprofits out there doing great work in our communities. At the close of the meeting, we'll ask for a group photo. That'll be Steph taking a picture of all our little squares. Um, so she's asking for a cheers or a wave. Uh, so we'll see what happens at the end of the meeting. My name is Sarah White. I'm one of the three co-chairs of the 100 Who Care Giving Group. Steph Sedgwick is manning our tech for the meeting live stream and the online voting. And Kathy Whitewood is here in a moment to introduce our three presenting charities. So we do have a few housekeeping items to start us off. Um, Voting will be available to members participating in the Zoom session only. You all should have received an email earlier in the week from Steph with the Zoom invite, and that's how you'll vote. Uh, there will be a poll pop up on the top of the screen. Uh, we're also, we're not accepting proxy votes. Each member can make one vote only. Uh, we'll be chatting for a few more minutes before we start the charity presentation. So if you want to go find the invitation link in your email and rejoin by Zoom, you can do that right now, because I'm just talking housekeeping. Um, the meeting's being recorded, you know that. We're using a live transcription service for this meeting to help address any sound issues that might occur. Uh, the transcript is visible only to participants in the Zoom meeting, and each of you can choose if you want to see the captions. Um, find and click on the CC, letter C, letter C, at the bottom of your screen. Um, after the meeting is complete, we'll add permanent captions to the recording. And a reminder, to update your online 100 Who Care profile at 100valleygiving.ca if you've had any changes in your contact information. When you receive the 100 Who Care email with the meeting reminder a few weeks out from each meeting, and our next mm -hmm. one will be in March, that's your opportunity to submit a name and an organization uh, for the registered nonprofit you would like to see go into the random selection for our next meeting's presentations. That's the biggest perk of being a member. Uh, you get to pick your favorites and uh, the ones you admire and put them in front of our group. If you do miss a quarterly meeting of the 100 Who Care, a reminder your membership commitment is for the four meetings we would schedule in a year. Please make sure you uh, make your online donation through the Canada Helps link or send it directly to the charity selected at a meeting you weren't able to attend. That ensures our chapter lives up to its goal of members making a combined donation. Um, we'll hear from three organizations. One will be presented with our group donation and our other two guests will each take home a Rewind 89.3 promotions voucher to help them get the word out to even more people on the programs and services they offer in our community. So I'll mail those out after the meeting. Uh, while we collect the votes, we'll open the floor in a little bit for a brief time. Anyone who has any uh, updates or information from other groups or charities or local events you think we should all know about, that's a good opportunity to have the floor. And once we know our winner, we create a fundraising page on canadahelps.ca. When possible, we post the page link directly into the chat during the meeting. That's Steph working her IT magic. The link will also be sent out by email after the meeting and posted on our website and Facebook page shortly after. Uh, watch for those instructions. If you're able to follow that online donation link, Canada Helps will generate an income tax receipt right then and there. Uh, it's super easy. Um, and it's the easiest way to do it for everyone. If you if you make your if you make your donation anonymous on Canada Helps, it makes us we can't track it to know that you were part of our hundred uh, who care donation. So if you could click donation not anonymous, that would be super. Um, Kathy, floor is yours. Thank you, Sarah. So tonight we have three community charities present to describe their work. Each will make a five minute presentation and we've asked them to let us know who they are, what their goal is, the services and programs they offer and how we can help them continue. Our charity presenters are attending our meeting. 
Steph will move them into a waiting room during their presentations and they'll be brought back in one at a time to make their presentation to the group. When their presentation begins, Steph will share a fact sheet about the charity to the group chat. Presenters will be asked to time their own presentations to keep to the five minute limit. Presenters will return to the waiting room while we collect member votes and we will bring them back into the meeting for the announcements. A reminder to members, there is no opportunity for group questions following a presentation. Members can read the fact sheet we provide in the chat area. If you would like more information after the presentations or donation vote, please feel free to check in with our reps after the meeting. We encourage you to like and follow each one of these three charities and help share their important work whenever you can. Or maybe their presentations gave you an idea of another way you'd like to help, perhaps by volunteering or in some other way. First up this evening is Valley Hospice Foundation's representative, Terry Milton. Okay, so just pause just for a second while I make sure that I move everybody around. Terry, I'm gonna move you first, because I found you. Um, Tara, I'm gonna move you. And then I believe, I'm sorry, who did you say I was presenting first? Uh, Terry Milton. Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> uh, how do I find them? In the room. Well, that's fun. Just a second. Here I thought I had this all figured out. Well, okay. Talk amongst yourselves. This might just take me a second. What is it, Frank? Would you like to meet Frankie? Come here, baby. Come say hi. There we anybody, go. Does anybody know how to get them back out of the waiting room? I thought I, I could do it before, but I don't see them at all now. Yeah, I've never done that. I have no idea. Shoot. Okay. All right. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Staff, it's Debbie. Is there a Hi. window on your right that lists the people that are in the waiting room? Yeah, if there, nice. Is there a white window on your right that lists a, just those people that are in the waiting room? No, I don't see that. Because that's what's room. happened with me before and I could just admit them back in. Yeah, that's what I expected to happen. Okay. Um, I don't see that. I, I can still see all the participants. Ooh, there they are. Thank you. Yep, that was exactly right. Thanks. Okay, I'm sorry. Who are we looking for? Terry Milton, right? Yes. I got it out. Terry, Terry will Thank be you. presenting. And uh, <laughs> Dawn in the town of Middleton and Tara are should be in the waiting room. Yes, those two. Tara and Dawn, yes. Are yeah. Right. Okay, sorry about that. Carry on. <laughs> Terry, you can go right ahead. I made a mistake about that, sorry. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Terry Milton. I'm on the board of the Valley Hospice Foundation. I'm really proud to serve on this foundation in honor of my mother, Colleen. After a two year battle with malignant meningioma and three brain surgeries, she received a terminal diagnosis and she became eligible for hospice care in Langley, BC. My family experienced the compassionate and dignified end of life care a hospice setting provides to patients like mom. It certainly changed my views on death and dying, on palliative care generally, and hospice care specifically. As a hike for hospice volunteer last fall, I got the opportunity to see the Valley Hospice building just before it opened. It was gratifying and very emotional to feel how remarkably similar it was to mom's hospice environment. So I know firsthand how fortunate the Annapolis Valley is to have the new hospice to provide end of life care in a home like setting. We describe the hospice not as a place for dying, but as a place for living your last days. What you may not know is that the foundation also supports a community-based palliative care team. Not everyone is fortunate enough to have a supportive network and volunteers can help. 
whether it's by sitting with patients or providing relief to caregivers. The Valley Hospice Foundation has been and continues to be dedicated to supporting both the hospice and the community-based team. Over the past several years, our foundation has supported the hospice itself, a long-term dream, which was realized in 2020. Enhancements to the hospice, such as beautiful gardens, improved sight lines to trees and the resident birds and squirrels, and patio planters outside each hospice room. Grief and bereavement support groups in our community. A care and comfort program that ensures patients and their families receive the supports they need during a very challenging time in their lives. Public education around advanced care planning, death and dying. Financial support for staff professional development and a volunteer program. We're especially proud of the volunteer program that began with funding from our foundation. 53 individuals have each completed 34 hours of training so that they may assist patients and their families in hospice or in their homes. Valley Hospice Foundation depends on donations from our community. The ongoing pandemic has created unique challenges for everyone's fundraising efforts, including ours, which include two signature fundraising events each year that involve large groups of people. Despite lockdowns and other COVID restrictions, our foundation got creative with altering planned events or moving them entirely online. And the extraordinary generosity we received in donations this year is a remarkable expression of ongoing support and love for the work of our hospice and palliative care teams, which brings me to our next initiative. We are very excited for a new music therapy partnership with Nova Scotia Health. The Valley Hospice Foundation and Nova Scotia Health plan to share the funding for a part-time music therapist working in the hospice. Music therapy is not simply providing or performing music. It's a valuable evidence-based component of a treatment plan and is designed to be beneficial to a patient. For example, it can significantly improve symptoms of pain, anxiety, depression, and even shortness of breath. Speaking from personal experience, music therapy enabled mom to communicate with family, friends, and staff when speaking became a challenge and she got to share her love of Elvis in new ways, which were both joyous and meaningful. The foundation is hopeful that with additional funding, we will be able to expand the music therapy program within the hospice and be able to consider providing it to the community. We are asking for your support toward the funding of a part-time music therapy position at Valley Hospice. This will undoubtedly enhance patients' experiences during end of life. Thank you for inviting the Valley Hospice Foundation to participate this evening and for considering our request. Thank you, Terry. Thanks. Next, I'd like to introduce you to Tara Cockman with SOAR, Survivors of Abuse Recovering. All right, I just gotta, I'm just gonna move Terry back into the waiting room now that I know what I'm doing. Hi, Tara, I'm bringing you back in. We've just introduced you, but I didn't bring you back in on time for the introduction. Sorry about that. I'm a little clunky with this stuff. No worries. Thanks. You can go ahead whenever you're ready. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank you for inviting me to speak with you this evening. My name is Tara Kaufman, and I'm a board member at SOAR. SOAR stands for Survivors of Abuse Recovering. And tonight, I'm here to speak with you about a topic that's taboo, that a lot of people kind of gasp when they hear about. It's childhood sexual abuse. I'm a survivor of childhood sexual abuse, and I speak from my own experience. So when you tell someone that you're a survivor, a lot of people gasp and, <gasps> And they feel very uncomfortable and don't know what to say. And they really put a lot of pressure on survivors not to say anything. So that leaves us with where should we go? For those who, um, turn, who have coverage and turn to uh, seeking a therapist, 
there is a shortage in long wait lists. Um, for those who don't have coverage, the public system is overrun and even Avalon Sexual Assault Center uh, has closed its wait list because they are overrun as well. So that is why our organization is so important. What we do at SOAR, or Survivors of Abuse Recovering, is we do peer support um, with other peers. So you might wonder, what is a peer? It's someone who has a shared living experience and our volunteers who are survivors themselves volunteer to go through a very rigorous training so that they can come across um, with a trauma-informed approach and um, really sit down and build a professional relationship with other peers. Now, there are boundaries about this. And the only time that a person who is a survivor that has seeked help and one of our peer uh, supporters meet is to discuss this particular issue. And uh, they don't do it at Tim Hortons. They're not friends. They don't, there's no other, it's very confidential, but it's very rewarding. And the reason for that is because you actually get to speak to someone who understands it. They actually get it when you talk about it. Even some of the best uh, therapists that I've been to, some of them are not survivors and they don't understand. They try, but they don't truly understand it. And that's where SOAR can make all the difference in the world. So right now, uh, we've been in existence for about 28 years now, and some of our founding members are still with us. But as you can imagine, uh, they're getting ready to retire and they'd like to see this wonderful organization that they've nurtured. Uh, and it was two local psych uh, psychiatrist nurses who started it because they saw the need that was not being fulfilled. Um, so they wanna see this really grow. And we have a great board right now that is ready to do leaps and bounds. We've started connecting with other organizations within the province um, who is very interested in our training material because there's a lot of proof about how peer support can really help people. And um, if we're gonna solve this mental health crisis that we're going through, it's gonna to have to be at the grassroots level. Um, currently we have 24 peer supporters trained. Um, about half of them are comfortable um, going and supporting other peers. And uh, that became a bit of a challenge because we have a wait list. And so we had people who were trained, but not getting out and supporting people. So what we've come up with, we've started a new peer mentoring program. So those are folks who have been supporting other people who want to help mentor other peer supporters. And uh, hopefully this will help people get over that hump so they're able to help others. Um, often survivors, um, there's a lot of confidence issues. As you can imagine, there's also a lot of family issues. Um, and that is another area where we're looking to expand. Um, this has a tremendous impact on families, including children. Uh, when they see mom or dad having a reaction or reliving a memory, and they don't understand why they're reacting that way. And of course, their partner really doesn't understand either. We want to provide a support group for uh, their partners so that they can help support the entire family through the process. Um, we also know um, with the Me Too movement, more and more people are becoming more comfortable with coming out and uh, wanting to have that conversation and discuss what has happened to them. And when it first, if you haven't remembered it your whole life, um, you can feel like you're going crazy when this starts to come back. Um, there's a lot of different um, experiences that people have. Um, not everyone's the same. A lot of people have carry a lot of shame, even though it's not their shame. They haven't done anything wrong. They were innocent children when they were assaulted. So we really wanna help provide that service. And we know there's a lot more people out there that could use our services. So marketing is a huge part of this as well, um, of what we would use the money for. I'm trying to get the word out um, so that more people know of what we, the service we provide and if they, you know, kind of get to a point in their journey where they feel like they can support others, we can also help them with that training and getting set up. Um, so it's kind of a, 
even when you become a peer supporter like myself, um, there are support groups for us. And there's a lot of healing that goes on during the training. You really bond with the other people who are in the training circle. And we have monthly meetings where um, we continue to support one another as we support other people. Um, so we really look forward um, to your uh, support. And uh, I hope I've covered most of what, we're what we've done, but uh, we're a solid organization. We've been around for 28 years and uh, we've helped hundreds of people. And I know there's a lot more out there that we can help. We're looking forward. Uh, we had an office and we've recently lost one. So if anybody out there has office space that they know we could use, we could use that. Marketing materials. And our big goal will be eventually to get an executive director. And with that, we'll be able to really expand our services. Um, thank you very much for your time and have a great evening. Thank you, Tara. Okay, our final presentation this evening is from Soldiers Memorial Hospital Foundation. Please welcome Don Heislop. Again, I wasn't very quick on the uptake there, so I've just brought him back in, but he's missed the introduction. Sorry, Kathy. <laughs> you want to restate that now that he's here? Sure. Our final presentation this evening is from Soldiers Memorial. Hospital Foundation, please welcome Don Heislop. Good evening, I'm Don Heslop, the Community Navigator for the Mid Valley Region Physician Recruitment and Retention Committee. The Soldiers Memorial Hospital Foundation, following the completion of the new primary health care center in December of 2020, identified the growing need for a subcommittee dedicated to the recruitment and retention of physicians. The committee represents volunteer members from the village of Kingston, Village of Greenwood, 14 Wing Greenwood, Town of Middleton, Bridgetown, along with five board members from Soldiers Memorial Hospital Foundation. Our committee's first project was to celebrate National Physician and Nurses Appreciation Week. Representatives from each community presented the three medical clinics from Kingston, Greenwood, and Middleton, including the primary care clinic at Soldiers Memorial Hospital, with fruit baskets and letters of appreciation. We have welcomed four visiting international physicians taking part in the six week practice ready assessment program at the Middleton Collaborative Practice. Each physician has received a gift box filled with donated products and services from the local businesses and artisan communities. Tours were arranged of the Valley region and historical sites. Special events were planned, birthdays celebrated and meals were exchanged to share in the different cultures of the visiting physicians and their families. In the beginning, our committee relied on monies from our own pockets and in-kind donations were generously provided by local businesses, community members and service groups. In recent months, we've received financial support from our GoFundMe account, a grant from Doctors Nova Scotia where we partnered, partnered with the Kingston Medical Clinic. Monies have been received from the village of Kingston and the town of Middleton with other donations coming directly from individuals in the community wanting to help. With this money, we hosted our first community welcome event, Meet the Doctors. At this event, we honored our new permanent physician and his family, along with the three medical residents training at the Middleton Collaborative Practice. 72 community members attended the event where we highlighted the accomplishments of our committee over the past six months. Here are a few of our accomplishments. We worked with Enterprise Renicar to offer a discount to medical learners and members of all other recruitment committees that work in Nova Scotia, including Cape Breton. By taking this initiative, our group negotiated an incentive that would assist every recruitment and retention committee in the province, including Nova Scotia Health. We established, with the help of Soldiers Memorial Hospital Foundation, a program to provide students from the catchment area of Soldiers Memorial Hospital a $1,000 scholarship to those students attending a medical school. This allowed us to financially assist five medical students in August of this year. The committee also secured a $10,000 relocation grant through the County of Annapolis for our new full-time physician who purchased a home in Annapolis County. This relocation grant allows the physicians to establish roots in the neighborhoods in which they work. One of the greatest needs for the upcoming year is to raise funds. These funds will allow us to attend in person physician recruitment fairs across Canada 
and to continue to provide support to all the physicians and their families here at home. We are currently working to design our website and are collaborating with 14 Wing Greenwood to help create a video to capture the beauty of our communities. The video will be placed on our website and shared with Nova Scotia Health to be used as one of their recruitment tools. We are also in the process of designing and pricing promotional material needed to showcase our area and to highlight why the Mid Valley region is the perfect place to live, work, and raise a family. The current figures for finding a primary health care provider in Nova Scotia continue to place the Mid Valley region as the highest population in the province requiring a primary care provider. There are currently 6,031 people without a family physician, representing 28.8% of the total population of the Mid Valley region, which includes all the communities from Aylesford to Bridgetown that are served by Soldiers Memorial Hospital. To ensure everyone has their own doctor, our committee has been working directly with recruiters from Nova Scotia Health to recruit 8.5 family physicians. While we have made strides in our short time as a committee, there still is much to accomplish. And with your help, we can. I wanna thank you so much for the nomination and for the opportunity to present to you this evening. Thank you, Don. Okay, I've, I've put all three presenters back in the waiting room. Okay. And uh, now it's time for the poll. a reminder while we're doing this that um, people who are watching the video through Facebook aren't going to see this poll so your vote won't be counted. Um, one of us might be checking Facebook uh, in case any messages come through there. Sarah did you were you going to do that? I can or Kathy are you more nimble or shall I? I've been on there I haven't seen anything pop up. Okay let's make Kathy do it. Okay <laughs> do you like I just threw you guys into that one? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Well, maybe just wait a couple of minutes. We've got, um, there's one vote waiting in this group. I don't see a poll. It might be me not voted yet. Okay. Well, if you don't see it, you can send it to me in the, the private chat, if you like. Okay. Wait, let me see if I've got anything in here. I think I did it, Steph, if I'm, if I'm the last person. I got you there. Yep, I got you. It seems to me I was the last person at a past meeting. Oh, is that right? Nice? I think so. Apparently, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, were you able to make your vote? I did. I don't I did. think you're a co-host, so that's that's good. Okay. Should I, I've I've got updates on the previous winners. If um, I'd like to uh, pass along that information, or is that uh, what should we wait? Um, well, I think we've got all the votes from the people that are in attendance. So, okay. Kathy, why don't why don't you do the um, why don't you do the past recipient updates, and then if anybody's on Facebook and is scrambling to figure out how to get a vote, that gives them a minute to do that. Okay, that's true. So in, let's see now, one of our past recipients was Rowan's, Rowan's Room Deve Developmental Society. Uh, Liz got in touch today just to update on the donations that have come in. They've received $5,700, which is great. Uh, thrilled and thanking everybody who's donated. It's made a huge difference in what they're able to do. They said, basically, because of your generosity, we've had several children with exceptionalities enjoying our after school program. We were able to hire and train an additional, an additional support staff member, which was due um, necessary due to the trauma background of one of our students. We've also been able to purchase healthy snacks as many of these children arrive on site incredibly hungry so we can ensure their tummies are full before they come home. 
though they were a very nice long letter, which I'm sure everybody just wanted me to read at length. And then we heard from Peter Gillis of the Valley Community Learning Association. They've received a total of $4,500 from our organization members. And uh, the purpose of the fund was to help support real life work placements for some of our learners who are moving along in their careers. The donation helped to kickstart this program. And as I, as Peter stated in his last email exchange, there were four, four students who were all supported with these funds. And again, greatly appreciated and um, you know, kudos to everybody who stays involved and, uh, and helps out through Canada Helps. That's that. Great, thanks, Kathy. Um, so we have uh, our results. Kathy, do you have anything else coming through that we need to count? I don't, um, okay. I'm looking and uh, I'm not seeing anything. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, send my co-chairs a private chat, sorry everybody, with the winners so that I can go prepare the fundraising page. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, Kathy and Sarah, did you see that message? I did, thank you. Okay, I'm going to take off my video while I go and set Okay, set up. sure. Um, thanks everyone, the voting poll is closed. Steph's off getting us geared up, so we'll know the results in a moment. And before we know, we've got a few items to share. Uh, when we meet in person, and because they're good friends in the background, Maritime Express Cider, they let us use the ballroom in the Main Street Station as our for our in-person meeting, so always thankful to them. We've got our 2022 dates booked, so hopefully we get to be back there pretty soon. Uh, BrightWeb's design sponsors and manages our awesome website at 100valleygiving.ca. And Rewind89.3 is our gift sponsor, has been for years, and we thank them very much. They provide on-air promotion vouchers for our presenting charities. And if you're interested in becoming a sponsor for one or more of our meetings, you can contact us. Um, the odd time we're looking for some postage. We might look for a Facebook boost uh, to help let more people know about our upcoming meetings and how to become a member. Um, so we'd love to have some a hand in that because we don't have a bank account. We all just kind of uh, wing it, use our connections and uh, see what we can... Kathy, your cat's tail just walked sorry. across there. I'm totally distracted. <laughs> oh, I'm so used to that. I'm sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> um, Dawn, Tara, Terry, thanks very much for your time this evening. And uh, thank you very much for the work you do on behalf of the community. It was great hearing from all three of you. Uh, all, those, all those projects are near and dear to your hearts. And we can all see how they make a difference in the community or can make a difference in the community. So we'll, uh, we'll be in touch with each of you after the meeting for any next steps. Um, Steph, are you ready? No, oh, I'm close. Okay, so this will be the open floor. Um, I expect everybody is busy, busy in their own little circles with uh, Christmassy uh, community efforts, um, projects and whatnot. Uh, if anybody had anything they'd like to share, uh, jump in and share your project how, how maybe there might be something there that grabs my attention or somebody else's and we might want to pitch in and help i'm uh, through our our office royal page atlantic we're collecting donations to go to the local shelters this christmas we do it every year pajama drive and so donations primarily go to chrysalis house and the portal uh sometimes we have enough one of our members will go to the uh, bridgewater shelter and support that. One of our huge sponsors is Giant Tiger. They're amazing to help out. They're looking for things a little bit different this year, looking for some more personal items for the for the gals at the shelter, like journals and uh, things that they can use to kind of get their person back, if you know what I mean. Um, little little um, inspiring notebooks. Uh, I forget what they called it, but there are journals that have inspiring messages on every page. That kind of thing so pajamas anything like that just feel free to drop them off at our office if you collect anything every every bit counts makes a big difference we're at 8999 commercial street in the nine to five perfect. Monday. great thanks perfect anyone else have a project underway right now or in the new year that we should be aware of Um, I was going to bring up that there was, um, I forgot to look it up before the meeting, so I don't remember all the details because that's how I roll. 
Um, but there was a, a like a choir association that was setting up, um, I think there were outdoor Christmas caroling events. There's oh, I saw that. Yeah. And I, I think there's that. done a couple elsewhere as well. And I thought that was really cool. So I wanted to tell you guys about that. But and, and I think I saw that in Wolfel, the Acadia chorus, the Acadia University choir was doing some of it downtown. And I'm not sure if all the dates have passed, but I can't expect that they are. Um, there might be more to come. Lots of community recreation programs, outdoor activities. Um, I do see in Wolfel the photo op down by the gazebo on the waterfront with their beautiful wreath. Uh, if there's a season to get outside and a reason because of a pandemic, um, outdoor activities, this is this seems to be a lot of communities are making an effort to make spaces for us to go. So it'd be nice to support them. If you see something super, make sure you let them know. And you can always post, um, we don't get a lot of people outside of us three co-chairs posting on the Facebook page, but we'd be happy to see stuff um, appear on there as well. Okay. Yeah, good idea. Okay. So I'm ready, unless anybody else has any more announcements they'd like to make. Go for it. All right. So tonight, December 9th, I am happy to announce the recipient of our group donation for the 100 Who Care Giving group is SOAR, uh, Survivors of Abuse Recovery. Um, the uh, Soldiers Memorial Hospital and the Valley Hospice Foundation will both receive Rewind 89.3 promotion vouchers to help support your ongoing projects. So congratulations, that's fantastic. Um, the Canada Helps Fundraising page link has not been shared yet. I'm going to do that right now. And um, as soon as this meeting is over, the link will be also posted on our social media and sent out in an email so that everybody can find it. Um, members, uh, watch for that donation link in your email. Uh, donating online is by far the fastest and simplest way to make your donation. Um, and it's also the easiest for the charities because then they don't have to write out receipts and put them in the mail. So before we sign off, um, if you can give me just a couple of minutes, I'd love to do a big cheers. If your camera's on and your clothes are on, uh, we'll do a little group photo and uh, give a big cheers to all of our members and our charities. Um, so we can just hold on while I get this set up. I don't know what it's doing. There we go. All right, is everybody ready? Yep. Awesome. Okay, let's do a couple because this is new for me. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Yay. Thanks, everybody. That's wonderful. So keep an eye on your emails. That concludes our, email, our meeting for this evening. Thank you very much to our three presenters. Uh, and thanks to uh, putting up with our continuing technological glitches. Um, our next meeting is March 10th. I'm not sure if that was already covered. Uh, we'd love to have you invite a friend to join our group. Uh, so calendar in the March 10th at six o'clock. Uh, and if you are really good at calendars, the next dates, we have them all lined up for 2022. Okay, so the March 10th, June 9th, September 15th, and December 8th. And those will all be on our website and they'll pop up in our Facebook as we get closer to those dates. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Steph. Nice to see you, sort of. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night. Bye.